What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the War Report here on Eagle Range. It is battle number five, Tuesday, March 14th, 2023. It's been a really exciting week. I'm your host, Foglata, and uh, we're going to fly right through this as quickly as you can. Real quick, some key terms for those first time tuning in. Prestige is the value of the land that you own. A claim is a total amount of prestige from week to week, battle to battle. Um, renown is the difference between when you take a thief over and where it is now. So if you improve it or degrade it, it shows in your renown. Triumphs is the value of the thieves that you own come the end of the season. Looking at some current events, we're going to slide on over the schedule real quick. We're in the eve of the storm period. We are halfway through it. We have three more battles. So right now you have your purple troops. You have your armor set bonuses, six auxiliary points. Not that anyone's using them. New unit was the Crescent Monks. If you haven't played with them, they're kind of interesting. All the regions are open right now. Battle number six is this Saturday, March 18th. And that's when we'll start seeing the first wave of house level six folks. That means Bridia, Whalewind, uh, those feasts down there in the southern borderlands are going to be up for grabs. Um, come the next Saturday, March 25th, we'll start seeing our first house level sevens. And that's when the stuff in the center of Liang Yun becomes available. So that's a really critical battle right there, right as we're turning into the next phase of the season. Um, a lot of those feasts are going to be pretty kind of deal breakers on where, where people are going, who's fighting for the capital. So we're going to see a lot of heated up battles Saturday, March 25th. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the alliance changes. We saw a couple things that I didn't quite expect. For one, Dauntless departed Defiant, and Warrior and Nation departed Defiant, which means Defiant is essentially dead. It no longer exists. Lawless departed Nyquil. Did not see that one coming, but I guess some others did. They saw that that wasn't a real good fit. Um, so we'll see where Lawless ends up. They did hold their own pretty well tonight, so they are definitely a group that you'd want to get in your alliance if you got that open spot. All right, so let's take a look at the alliance lineup. Top 20 North American houses by seasonal claim. NA Dogs currently has the lead with 17,940. Maelstrom with 17,650. Just fell behind. Hibernia, 14,250. Gladiators, 12,950. Foundation, 11,625. Inevitable, 10,595. Eternal, 9,750. Fields of Fire with 8,190. Club Penguin, 7,500. Nyquil is 6,300. Righteous Order, 2,700. Revenant, 1,980. Khan is 1,845. Trium Veritas, 1,800. Trinity, 1,650. Rage, 1,050. No Evil, 650. Draconis Combine with 345. Celtic Knot with 300. And Ring of Rebels with 150. All right, we're going to slide on over to the war. Here we go. First up, the Borderlands. Northern Borderlands has been hot. Like, since the kickoff of this season, it is a very contested area, and tonight was no exception. Here's where we began. There's where we ended. That is what changed. So, Vancura gained a new fief. They were holding strong down there. Uh, the fiefs that they owned, they were pretty much under siege constantly, and uh, they held their own on that. Uh, Atlas with three new fiefs, Hit Integrity with two new fiefs, Lawless with one new fief, Wraithbound with one new fief, Templarios with one new fief, Vigilantes with one new fief, Muramasa gained one, Speak gained one, and Savages gained one. We saw Ying Yang exit stage right, literally, and head all the way over to uh, Long Ting to go pick up some fiefs over there. On the south end, we had the Midway Kings Fallen campaign going after everything down there. So here's where we started, and here's where we ended. Now, don't worry. I'll fix the background color for you, LK. Don't you worry. All right, so here you go. Changes for the region. The Fallen snagged up six new fiefs. Midway Kings gained six new fiefs. I Kingdom gained a fief, and Vigilantes gained a fief. Overall, the Borderlands houses have thinned down since a few weeks ago, but we still have the Fallen with the biggest chunk of land, 16%, 3,600, followed by the Borderlands Legion with 3,000, then Gosh Gadub, 2,600, Midway Kings, 1,800, Hit Integrity, 1,650, Homegrown with 1,650, Notoriety Clip, 1,500, Odin, 950, Atlas 900, Vancouver 900, Lawless 600, I Kingdom 600, Goshkia 500, Damocles 500 or 450, 
Mermasa 450, Savages 300, Vigilantes 300 here, 200, Templarios 150, Wraithbound 150, Speak 150, Blackwing Guard 150, and Fight Club with 150. Let's go ahead and take a look over at Long Tang. This is where we began, and that's where we ended. Take a look at the battles over there. Had a whole lot of things going down. Thoys gained two. Severance gained two. Odyssey gained three. Dawn Ham Hammer gained two. Chosen Ones gained four. Yang Yang gained two. And Noctum Invicte gained two. So taking a look at the houses of Long Ting, we have expanded. We now have the Long Ting Legion owning 49% of the world, 2,550. Chosen Ones came in and uh, took over a bunch with 600. Odyssey with 450, Severance with 300, Thoys with 300, Noctum Invicte with 300, Ying Yang 300, Dawnhammer 300, and Khan 150. All right, so now for the main event. Here we are in Liang Yun. This is where we began, and that's where we ended. Looking at the battles in Liang Yun, we can see Dynasty gaining four new properties. Hong Song Army taking over three, Vanguard with three, Onyx Dragons with one. Gaia with one, Shang'an City with one, and Chosen Ones with two. Looking at the houses of Liang Yun, starting to thin out a bit over here. The Liang Yun Legion owns 39% of the world, 9,100 prestige. Vanguard of NA Dogs, 3,510. Dynasty with 3,315. Warriors Nation with 2,145. Hong Song Army with 1,625. Iota with 1,365, Vindication 1,170, Chosen Ones with 390, Gaia with 260, Chang'an City with 195, and Onyx Dragon with 195. Now looking at this race for the capital city, we went from 5 to 1. Now only NA Dogs is in the running with 6,825. They have enough to go knock knock right this minute. They still got a few more weeks to go, so we don't know if a contender is going to step up or merge together and take on NA Dogs. But as of right now, it looks like it's going to be NA Dogs versus the Liang Yun Legion. Should be a really interesting fight nonetheless. I suspect we're going to start seeing some alliance merging going on, and we might see this turn into a real contest. Alright, so, taking a look at the rankings, I'm going to slide on over to the FIFA race. Top house level 5s. We have the Fallen. Vanguard, Dynasty, Goshki Dub, Warriors Nation, Midway Kings, Homegrown, Hit Integrity, The no Notoriety Club, Iota, Vindication, Chosen Ones, Odin, Vancura, Atlas, Lawless, I Kingdom, Odyssey, Savages, Ying Ying, Vigilantes, Dawn Hammer, Gaia, Chang'an City, Fight Club, Wraithbound, Inquisition, and Durandin leading out that pack. In the top house level 4 category, we have Goshkia, Thoys, Noctum Invicte, here, Khan, Speak, Blackwing Guard, Leviathan, Immortal, Soda, and Immortal QC. In the House Level 3 category, we have Hong Song Army, Damocles, Muramasa, Severance, Conquest, and Contra. All right, let's take a look at the movers and shakers. Tonight's big winners were the Fallen with plus six. Midway Kings comes in a close second, tied with Chosen Ones with five. And then we got Dynasty with four. Atlas with three, Hong Song Army with three, Vanguard with three, Hit Integrity with two, Odyssey with two, and Noctum Invicte with two. In the biggest losses of the night, Khans lost eight, Durandin lost four, I Kingdom lost four, Iota lost three, Warriors Nations lost three, The Warriors lost three, Noidoriety Club lost two, Mithra lost two, Blackwing Guard lost one, and Fight Club lost one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the top 10 houses. In first place, we have the Fallen of the Gladiators. 3,600 total prestige. Level is 5. McGee is a liege. Population is 95. Seems to claim a 9,900. Renown of 150. Property value of 150 triumphs. All right, next up. Got to look at number 2. We have the Vanguard. NA Dogs. 3,510. Level is 5. Tong Tong is liege. Population is 97. Seasonal claim of 10,530. Renown of 390. Property value of 120 triumphs. Next up in third place, we have Dynasty of NA Dogs. 3,315 prestige. Level is 5. Jet Li is a liege. Population is 100. Seasonal claim of 7,410. Renown of 195. Property value of 135 triumphs.
Next up, in fourth place, we have Goshkita above Hibernia. 2,600 prestige, level is 5, Hoglotter's Liege, population is 94, seasonal claim of 9,100, renown of 50, property value of 135 triumphs. Next up in fifth place, we have Warrior's Nation. 2,145 prestige, level is 5, Yada is the liege, population is 75, seasonal claim of 9,770, renown of negative 65, and property value of 90 triumphs. All right, so looking at sixth place, we have Midway Kings of Gladiators, 1,800 prestige, level is 5, LK is liege, population is 85, seasonal claim at 3,050, renown of 0, property value of 80 triumphs. Alright, bringing up 7th place, we have Homegrown of Maelstrom, 1,650 prestige, level is 5, your leaf is the liege and population is 98. Seasonal claim of 8,050. Renown of 350. Property value of 85 triumphs. In eighth place, we have Hidden Integrity of Club Penguin. Level 5, the Rio Cane West or Rio Cane East is the liege. Population is 94. Seasonal claim of 3,900. Renown of 300. Property value of 85 triumphs. And in ninth place, the Hong Song Army. 1,625 prestige. Level is 3. Remisama is the liege. Population is 34. Seasonal claim of 2,470. Renown of 65. Property value of 55 triumphs. Bringing up 10th place, we have the Notoriety Club of Maelstrom. 1,500 prestige. Level is 5. Total is the liege. Population is 96. Seasonal claim of 5,100. Renown of 300. Property value of 75 triumphs. Taking a look at the big board. There you go. I did fix the icons. I even added some titles there so you know what's what. And there you go. So there's your 1 through 30. Still can't believe there are so many houses on this server. It is amazing. You all do fine work. All right. So here we go. We're sliding over to the Alliance Movers and Shakers. Top gains of the week. Gladiators with plus 11. NA Dogs in second with 7. Club Penguin with 4. Fields of Fire with 3. Righteous Order with 3. Revenant with 2. And No Evil with 1. Biggest losses of the night. Cons lost 8. Maelstrom lost 7. Eternal lost 6, Foundation lost 5, Celtic Knot lost 1, Ring of Rebels lost 1, Trinavertus lost 1, Trinity lost 1, and Nyquil lost 1. Looking at the top alliances, we have NA Dogs in 1st place with 6,825. Seasonal claim of 17,940, renowned of 585, property value of 255, property or population of 197, Dynasty is the lead with Vanguard at their side. All right, next up, in second place, we have Gladiators of 5,400 prestige. Seasonal claim of 12,950. Renown of 150, property value of 230 triumphs. Population is 180. Midway Kings is the lead with the Fallen at their side. Next up in third place, we have Hibernia with 4,050 prestige, seasonal claim of 14,250, renown of 100, property value of 200, population is 291, Goshki is the lead with Goshki Dub and Odin at their side. Next up in fourth place, we have Maelstrom with 3,750 prestige, level Seasonal acclaim of 17,650, renown of 650, property value of 190 triumphs, population is 290. The Notoriety Club is the lead with Homegrown and I Kingdom at their side. Next up in fifth place, we have Club Penguin with 2,700 prestige, seasonal claim of 7,200, renown of 300, property value of 130, population is 262, head integrity is the lead with Atlas and Fight Club at their side.
Next up, bringing up sixth place, we have Inevitable. 1,625 prestige, seasonal claim of 10,595, renown of 390, property value of 65 triumphs, population is 278. Vindication is the lead with Gaia and Chang'an City at their side. Next up in seventh place, we have Fields of Fire with 1,590 prestige. Seasonal claim of 8,190, renown of 150, property value of 50 triumphs, population is 158. Thoys is a lead with uh, choose, Chosen Ones and Severance at their side. Next up, 8th place we have Foundation with 1,365 prestige, seasonal claim of 11,625, renown of 585, property value of 70 triumphs, population is 289, Iota is the lead with Inquisition and Knights Templar at their side. Next up in ninth place we have Righteous Order with 600 prestige, seasonal claim of 2,700. Renown of zero, property value of 25 triumphs, population is 259, Dawnhammer is the lead with no Noctum Invicte and Sota at their side. And then lastly in 10th place, just made it onto the board, Revenant, 450 prestige, seasonal claim of 1980, Renown of zero, property value of 20 triumphs, population is 284. Vigilantes is the lead with Wraithbound and Warborn at their side. And remember, there are over 20 alliances this season. So uh, the other 20, you know, the 11 through 20, aren't going to make it. So looking at the free agents. Warrior Nation, 2,145, that's a hell of a steal. Hong Song Army, 1,625, that's a hell of a steal. Vanguard, 900. Lawless, 600. Odyssey, 450. Damocles 450, Muramasa 450, and Templarios with 150. It's going to slide on over to the raffle. Go ahead and type in CB now if you'd like to win some Hero EXP cards. Here we go. Got a bunch of you before the stream. Let's see how many we get with the stream. Going to cast in those CBs. Yep, there we go. All right, still a bunch of you without it. Let's go ahead and get those check marks. There we go, almost all of you. I see you, Pappy the Pizza Man. Why don't you top, type in CB? You know you want these. All righty, rolling. Congratulations to Bangang307. I'll send you your code shortly after the stream. Congratulations. Let's go ahead and continue on to our realm economy. First up, we're going to take a look at the top 10 Fief Builders. Iota currently leads back with 585. Vanguard in second with 390, tied with Mithra with 390. Then in fourth place, we have Homegrown with 350. Hit Integrity with 300. The Notoriety Club tied for fifth with 300. We have Ankura tied for 5th with 300. And then Dynasty, Gaia, and Chang'an City share the rank of number 8. Alright, so next up we're going to look at the most prestigious towns in the land. Guess what, guys? We have a level 6 back on the map. Mingyu, currently owned by Oda uh, Foundation, is rank 6. One more and you can craft siege weapons. That's a 40% bonus rewards to all Thief quests turned in there. In the Thief level 5 category, we have King, uh, Gao King. Hebo, Godoa, Bridia, and Shojin. Those are where you can get your 20% bonus rewards for Fief Quest turn-ins. And then we have Fief Level 4 for 10% bonus rewards. Ilav, Luj, Zanlin, Haley, uh, Youngsin, Narth, Yixing, Renlin, Akator, Kinu, Whalewin, Zidani, and Zulong. That is where you can get those 10% bonus rewards. All right, so first up, we're going to slide over to the Borderlands. There we go. We are currently looking at 95% free house versus 5% legion ownership. We have a 7,850 prosperity growth over here. Average fort level is 2. Average town level is 3. Average village level is 1. Renowned builders in the region. Homegrown with 350. Followed by Hit Integrity with 300. 
Notoriety Club with 300, Vancouver with 300, and The Fallen with 150. Top fortified stronghold in the region is a tie between Shojin and Britia, both rank 5. Top growing villages, we have Malana and Pakora, Sansiong and Zunsheng, all rank 2 right now. It's good to see some of them villages getting levels, you know? Not that they really do much, but it's good to see them level up. Good job, guys. All right, so fief quests in the region. Here we go. Top player XP gains. 3,600 if you got those rare rebel cavalry kits. Ten of them. Take them on over to Bridia. If you're looking for honor gains right now, key new is where you want to go. Two legendary unit kits. You can buy those at any of the free colonies. The little trade... Uh, Trade, trade areas are like, if you look at Old Prospect or Shaman's Hill, you can go to the Weapon Smuggler and buy the Rat and Ranger kits. They're like 2,300 silver apiece. That's 550 honor per turn in. Very much worth it. Uh, top honor XP gains. You have Shojin with 100 regional exotics for 240. That's the best you're going to get in region. Um, aside from that, Kinu, um, Zulong, Zedeni all have it for the 220. All right, let's go ahead and drop down to the siege crafting scene. Bridia still has the well-made grape shot cannons and the well-made culverns. Shojin has the well-made cannons. Next up, Borderlands unit kit crafting. Bridia has the Prefecture Heavy Cavalry kit and the Huskarl kit, the Actuator kit. And then Shojin has the Imperial Pike Guard kit, Yeoman kit, and Marmillo kit. All right, taking a look over at Long Ting. Over here, we have a 64% ownership of free house, by free houses, 36% by legion. We currently have a prosperity growth of zero. Absolutely nothing has been upgraded. Um, so you have no renowned builders. You have no fortified strongholds. You have no growing villages. They're all just decimated, waiting for somebody to come over and give them some love. All right, so Fief Quest over here, as can be expected, are absolute a nightmare. It's better to go to the west and go turn them in in Liang Yu. At least there you can get something worthwhile. Over here, you do have the two Barb Quests for 3,000 EXP if you want. Um, that's at the wall that does nothing over there at Wong Kyogun. If you look at that wall, you'll laugh. You can walk around it. It's funny. It's not much of a wall. Uh, top Honor Gains, two Barbs, 200 Honor. It's best you're going to get. Uh, top house exp you have pretty much everywhere that has regional exotics is going to give you 200 house exp there's no bonuses at all in the region so that's pretty much the baseline so just look at that go turn him in get your 200 move along there is no siege crafting there is no unit kit crafting over there in long ting it is just absolutely decimated nothing to see here all right so liang yun's regional prosperity we have a 61 percent free houses with the 39% legion, we have 8,255 prosperity growth. Average fort level is 5, average town level is 4, average village level is 1. Aoda currently leads the renowned builders with 585, followed by a two-way tie between Vanguard and Mithra with 390. Chang'an City with 195 and Dynasty with 195. Top fortified strongholds in the region, Ming Yu is the only level 6 fief in the whole world right now. Top growing villages... Jiang Jing, or Jiang Gong, read that backwards, uh, and Hang, Hong Song, Haoling, and Kashi are all ranked too. All right, so the fee quest scene here is a little better. So over at Ming Yu, you have the Rare Rebel Cavalry Kits for 4,200, just 10 of those. Top Honor Gains, you got the Epic Artillery Quest over there at Hebo. You also have the two Legendary Unit Kit quest over there at Ming Yu for 700. So whether you want 700 or 720, either way, it's still pretty good compared to what else is out there. Over there at the top house EXP gang column, you can see Hebo is your best bet with a 240 house EXP reward for those 100 regional exotics. Not really a good week for those regional exotics, in all honesty. Uh, pretty much everywhere that is upgraded doesn't have it. So that's going to be really hard pressed to keep up on that curve and keep your house leveling up as we progress through the season. Uh, hopefully next week is a little better. So looking at the siege crafting scene, Goda can do well-made ballistas. Mingyu is still waiting for it to get up to level 7 so that you can craft two different types of siege weapons. Hebo has well-made grape shot cannons. 
Looking at the unit kit crafting, Ming Yu currently has the Silver kits and the new Calvaryman uh, kits. You can craft both of those there. Imperial Pike Guard kits, Camel Lancer kits. Goda has the Imperial Javelinier kits, the Crescent Monk kits. Hebo has the Imperial Arcabuse kit and the Kevtool Calvary kit. And that pretty much sums it up, guys. You've sat through the entire war report. I thank you all for tuning in. I do hope that I'll see you on Saturday. We'll be doing this all over again Saturday, 9 p.m. I look forward to seeing you there, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate all the support. Have a good one.